Hi guys, welcome back. This session we discuss on Turing machine, which is very important concepts of automata theory. Let's start. So to know Turing machine, we should discuss on three things. One is what is Turing machine, why Turing machine, and how to design a Turing machine. So let's understand what is Turing machine. So Turing machine is an automata. You know what is an automata already, which accepts type zero language. That is recursively enumerable language. Very simple. What it contains, what it has, we'll see one by one. But when you say why Turing machine, in short we call it as TM, why Turing machine for that, you should know few things about PDA. However, you have already understood what is PDA, you have seen some of the videos to design PDA, and as well, you know how to convert PDA to context with grammar, whatever. Now, when you say you should know the drawbacks of PDA, say for example, you have a language L equals 0 power n, 1 power n, such that n greater than or equal to 0. It's easy for you to solve PDA for this, or you can easy to solve to develop a PDA for this because you try to push zeros and pop zeros for everyone. What if suppose you have 0 power n? 1 power n and 2 power n. It's quite impossible because there is no option for you to check with third symbol, right? This is one problem which cannot be solved in PDA. Also, if you have the problem WW power R where WR is reverse of W. This is also one of the problem where we cannot be able to solve with PDA properly because you have a confusion here. Hope you can recall this PDA is called as NPDA. We are unable to solve this problem. This both these type of problems can be solved using Turing machine and both won't come under roughly on uh, type one language. Sorry, type two language. Along with this, we also have some reasons why do we go for Turing machine because we can have some programming things in that. We'll discuss in further videos. Then, how to design Turing machine is again a very Lengthy discussion, we go videos by I mean session by sessions. Now, when you say what is Turing machine, Turing machine should be understood in few things. The moment you say Turing machine, you should know few things with this. One is memory part of it, the read write head which is able to design, and the control unit. Memory is a magnetic tape in this. Unlike PDA, where PDA has stack which has provision or which has uh, it would suffer from stack overflow as well. Now, the moment if we say magnetic tape, it is an infinite magnetic tape which has divided into some, something called as cells, where each cell is capable of storing one symbol. And we have read right head which either keep moving towards left or right which is controlled by control unit so there are three components of Turing machine first is memory or magnetic tape second is read right head third is control unit as I said I just ship it again magnetic tape has contained so many cells where each cell is capable of storing one symbol there is a read right head which is pointing to a particular cell which either move towards left or right at any point of time it will be pointing one single cell the moment if we say left it moves one cell towards left or if it, if it is right it moves one cell towards right this movement is controlled by control unit though we can able to explain this using this explanation we need to know what is the formal definition of Turing machine which is very much required with respect to formal languages and automata theory to know what is a formal definition of Turing machine. Okay, a Turing machine M is a symmetrical system which has Q, Sigma, Tau, Delta, Q0, B and F. These are seven tuples where Q is set of states, internal states, 
as similar to other uh, automata. Sigma is set of input symbols. Let's call it some more. Tau Tau is set of tape symbols because we may have to use some symbols on the tape. Those symbols are uh, represented or denoted by tau. Delta is transition function. We will see how to write transition in some time. So transition function is delta. Q0 is initial state. We say Q0 belongs to Q. F, sorry, B is blank symbol. We should remember that in a Turing machine, tape will have usually B. That means these cells will have the symbol B. Whenever we want to solve a problem or uh, find a solution, we try to replace those blanks with the required input symbols. Then the last triple is F. F is set of final states where F is said to be subset of Q. Seven triple Q sigma tau delta Q naught Z uh, sorry B and F. So internal states, input symbols, transition function, tape symbols, initial state, blank symbol, and final states. Now what is transition function? Is the question. Transition function can be divide, defined as Q cross tau that gives rise to Q cross tau union left or right observe properly it talks about you are mapping with the state and tape symbol that would give rise to tape mean to say state tape symbol along with to say whether to move read right head towards left or right let me take a simple example and understand it says suppose if it says in the state q naught if the input symbol is A, then I say change the state to Q1, replace A by uppercase A and move towards left. If you write like this, what it says or what it specifies, it says if there is a tape, a Turing machine, where you have a symbol A and Turing machine is in state Q0, then when you encounter A, replace A by uppercase A change the state to q1 and move towards left it was pointing here earlier replace a by uppercase a okay for ease of understanding you can write it then you are moving towards left similarly if it says in the state q0 if you encounter b b in the same state q0 replace b by b and move towards right assume this is one transition you have here any of the transitions are taken for example again if you have an automatic a Turing machine where it is pointing here, pointed in the state uh, Q0, then when B is encountered, we say replace B by B itself, let it be B only, but we are saying to move towards right. Is it not clear? I mean, is it not is it not simple? Yes, it's pretty much simple to understand. Further, we need to understand how to solve a Turing machine problem. Thank you for watching. Keep watching, subscribe to the channel. Thank you.